work snack. Um, but let's continue with this brilliant lineup. Um, I'm really, really delighted to welcome Ellen Ubi. Uva. sector um, and her role as a collaboration hub manager um, for housing retrofit partnerships which really requires stimulation of off-site retrofit supply chain and also the, the encouragement of, um, of collaborative practice. Um, Uva has been working on the energy efficiency buildings for the last 20 years within the Germany, German um, Energy Agency and is a um, building up the, the German energy team, which is, is really fast growing um, market prefabrication of net zero building solutions. So welcome both of you. Thank you so much, Katrina. Um, as, as she said, I'm Elle George, and I'm here representing Energy Scrum UK. And I'm Uwe from the German Energy Scrum team. So, guten tag, buongiorno, bonjour, guten tag, hello from myself and the entire Global Energy Scrum Alliance. The term Energy Scrum means energy leap and it, Energy Scrum started in the Netherlands in 2013 and has since been um, implemented thousands of times. So first I want to start by talking about the importance of learning from others. But never in my life did I think I would be quoting this man. And this man is Donald Trump. And he said, always try and learn from other people's mistakes, not your own. It's cheaper that way. Then again, he probably stole it from the Latin, Latin proverb, which is, it's best to learn from the wisdom of others. Sorry, it's best to learn wisdom by the experience of others. And it pains me to say that Trump's right. It's cheap to learn from others. And we do need to address a big elephant in the room. How on earth are we going to afford it? I'm going to come on to this a little bit more in a moment. But without a doubt, I think we need to learn and share from our own supply chain. Not only to um, share across our own supply chain here in the UK, but by learning the experience from others overseas. So we're very lucky that we've got Uber here today to help with that. So, today, if nothing else, I want to achieve three things. Number one, I want to dispel this myth. We are not a retrofit supplier. You cannot buy an Energy Sprong. Energy Sprong is a movement, and in fact, if you, as you've just heard, it's a global movement. Number two, I want to share some of the, an insight into the breadth of projects that are happening, but they're not all happening yet at scale in the UK. And number three, which is my favorite, we want to make a case today for industrialising retrofit. So instead of more of the same, we propose scalable solutions rather than one-off prototypes. But of course, we do need to learn from these prototypes, but then work out how can we scale these solutions for mass rollout. And since we're about a retrofit, I don't think I need to make the case for why we need to retrofit. Um, I think you guys already all know the reason we must act, and um, the, the speakers have already touched on it. But um, we've heard the stat already, we've got about 28 million homes in the UK. Apparently, some of the worst performing homes in Europe. But spoiler alert, we are not achieving anywhere near the required rate of retrofits. And I don't want to, um, no, I don't get me wrong, this is not a silver bullet that I'm proposing. But given the scale of this problem, surely we need to lie, rely on an industrial solution. So, manufacturing is the business of producing goods in large numbers. And when we think about manufacturing, we often associate it with consumer products, um, food, medicines, vehicles, and these industries use manufacturing processes to efficiently produce standardized products at scale. And the benefits include consistency, quality, and cost effectiveness. And there's the opportunities, not guaranteed, but the opportunity for more sustainable outcomes. And in construction, we've really only just started to think, oh, perhaps it's a good idea if we're a bit more efficient with the way we build. 
And this has in part been driven by um, a desire to be more sustainable, but also to improve our productivity. So this time last year, I was here at Best talking about MMC, and I held up a Lego brick, and I tried to explain that Lego is a platform, and that we need to start thinking about platforms for construction. And I seem to have found myself talking about Lego quite a bit over the last year, both at home and um, at work. Um, so let's imagine a world where we could retrofit buildings as easily as adding or removing Lego bricks. This compatibility of Lego wasn't an accident that the Lego company stumbled upon. It was deliberate and thoughtful. And we need to be deliberate and thoughtful to enable this to happen in construction. And in fact, thinking about platforms for construction is growing in popularity. And last year, the Construction Innovation Hub launched the platform rulebook with the aim of improving safety, performance, quality and sustainability. And if you're sat here thinking, I've got no idea what this woman is on about, I don't know what a platform is, ask yourself this, have you ever used Uber, a digital platform? Have you ever bought IKEA furniture? This is a physical product platform. And if yes, then you've used a platform solution. So by working out what buildings have got in common, we can design for manufacture and assembly, or DFMA. We can design standard kits of parts because standard parts go together in standard ways and then the process is leaner and quicker um, to put together. And one vital element of this platform approach is for the digital or physical platforms and products to be interoperable. And that means that the components of different suppliers fit together with ease. So to achieve that very difficult task in construction, we need a very high degree of cooperation and collaboration from the supply chain so that they can agree how we do this. So Energy Sprawl look to support manufactured solutions so that they're assembled on the site. These two, oops, I don't back either. <laughs> These two smug looking guys on the right hand side are Matt and Richard and they're from the Energy Sprawl UK team. And they were the winners of my assembly challenge, which is part of my Lego as a platform workshop. And once we talked about some of the benefits of platforms, we tried to identify some of the existing platforms in the retrofit space. And we mapped out what the supply chain is already doing so that we can support them, support the supply chain to build capability and capacity. Um, and that clearly, and very importantly, needs to respond directly to the client's needs. And another way our market development team, or MDT, uh, Uber's going to cover more about the MDT in a minute, um, the way that we support the supply chain is by facilitating learning from others via study tours and showcase events in the UK and in Europe. Because don't forget that the best way to learn is wisdom is from the experience of others. So we took a field trip to the Netherlands, and it wasn't for the tulips, it was to learn how they've already created platform solutions for retrofit. And we're trying to learn from this global movement and bring this knowledge back to the UK. And you might even recognise the eager lady in the blue coat um, on the front as our own Sarah Edmonds. And she's learning about a great innovation um, being deployed in Beckentree, which is the largest housing estate in the UK. And it's a product called House Wrap by Ultrapanel. The home is prepared ready to receive a pre-manufactured pieces or kit of parts for assembly. And in fact, the installation team who learned how to install this in one day, they were trained on the system and they said it's like Lego for adults. So on the top left there, you can see it's the same, we might not be able to recognise, but it's actually the same two homes that you saw and they have had the house wrap. And it's one of the products that's been developed as part of the Retrofit Accelerator for Homes Innovation Partnership, or RAHIP, because who wants to say that mouthful? And I'm going to be brutally honest now, there's at least one person in the room that's worked on RAHIP and knows that industrial solutions are currently much too expensive. And this is because the market is not scaled enough. This approach doesn't work if we continue in prototype. The yellow monodraft Home Zero energy modules, this is another prototype of 10 homes. And now they just need an order of 100 homes to manufacture at scale, and that will bring the cost down. Although we've got hundreds of different archetypes up and down the UK that all need retrofitting, Willoway bungalows, cavity wall, solid wall, cross wall, tenement buildings. For each of these archetypes, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of similar homes, 
and they could use a product approach. And this is a further way that our market development team is supporting clients and the supply chain. We're aggregating this client demand as we have in Rahit, so that the supply chain has got the confidence to scale up. And it's almost as if we need a matchmaking service. And in fact, that's what our team are working on next. You can see the image on the bottom right. It's a tool for identifying properties based on a number of factors like ownership, tenure, the energy efficiency data, and a lot of other um, data inputs. So we want to actually develop a digital marketplace, a digital platform um, for solutions that can be matched by archetype. So we're basically aiming to be the matchmakers for bringing solutions to the market. So like Tinder for retrofit innovations, swipe right for progress. And speaking of progress, Melius Homes, um, the photos in the middle there, these, are, um, the, these guys are continuing to manufacture retrofit facades in Nottingham where Energy Spawn started in the UK. And they're naming it because they've got more than 50% females in their workforce. So they're building walls and breaking glass ceilings. So yet another benefit of manufacturing approaches is that we can encourage women and those with disabilities into construction. So I'm now going to hand over to Uva from Energy Spawn Germany to hear a bit more about the tremendous work that they're doing. Yeah, thank you. So I'm going to talk about what's happening outside the UK. Um, talk about something we've heard about life and what's necessary to grow. So I'm talking about a lively community that's growing actually, the Eastbrook movement. And um, if we look at what's happening, look about what's happening outside the UK, there are many countries with hundreds of companies already engaging in these prefabricated net zero retrofit solutions. In Germany, we have a first gigafactory that was designed to build 20,000 homes per year, new build. And now with the decline in new build, they switch over to do retrofit, to prefabricated retrofit. You see that on the image there. So what's happening in Germany as an example, also in France and other countries? We have 35 projects done so far, or under construction, 1,000 units, apartment buildings. We have up to 10,000 units in the pipeline, that means coming over the next two or three years. And then we've got first schools, office buildings, single family houses, it's all to come. And all the houses you see are prefabricated net zero solutions, A plus, or even better plus energy houses. Yeah, maybe a little video to show you what that actually means. So what you see here is a project in Herford, in Germany. It's a student's residence from the 50s, four buildings, 24 apartments. These apartments are retrofitted to a plus energy solution. The roof is removed, the old roof. On the old roof structure, they just post these elements with insulation and PV included. So the next scene, you see the old roof, it's open, you put these elements on top and you're done. Then on the old walls, you can see some uh, wood beams there, there to level out the surface. And you put these elements on top, they are solar active. That means after the retrofit, the house is so good you can heat it with a candle. It doesn't even need a heat pump. It just has infrared heaters in the room for the coldest days. And the energy, the PV on top, um, generates that much energy that there are 10,000 kilowatt hours per apartment of surplus per year, for example, for an electric car. And this all was done in four months. the in Eastbrook idea is about putting all the obstacles we've heard into a product and that's happening in the UK but also in several countries in the EU, in the Baltics and even in New York State in California there are first activities and projects and soon in Ireland hopefully as well. Well, we've asked our international colleagues what are the some of the components that you use, your favorite components and Sebastian he came up with an energy module the solar pot that integrates a uh, heat pump, the warm um, water generation, the ventilation, the heat recovery, and the monitoring system, all in one box, plug and play. Then Thomas, he came up 
this, with a solution for Italy, which is an anti-seismic facade to generate more stability in case of an earthquake, but at the same time generating, generating a net zero home. And then Christian, he came up with a solution from Germany, which is called the backpacker. You include all the ducts and pipes that need to be retrofitted as well into one box, put it to the wall, and you have it much easier retrofitting all these small ducts and pipes in the house. Well, we're still starting. So if we see what needs to happen in Germany, there's still a factor of 100 to go. So that means we need to massify we need scalable solutions. And if we see like the dynamics that we have, for example, on a conference two weeks ago in Germany with 350 people only talking about serial retrofit and new solutions, then I think we're on a good way. But how did we get there? First of all, what I said, all the obstacles that Robert made, put them not into a one-by-one -one approach per project, put them into a product that means you can copy and paste them. And this product needs to be easy, fast, affordable, and good at the same time. So, one thing that helps us very much is see the good example of the Netherlands. We've heard about scarcity of labor, of skilled labor. So, why not double the productivity of the construction sector with prefabricated solutions? We've managed that in other businesses. Why not in the construction sector? And we can do that with these prefabricated elements. And then the third thing that I think is very important, and we'll talk about, I'll talk about that more, is the hard work of stakeholders to work on these solutions. That includes housing associations, builders, governments, but also market development teams. What is a market development team? Well, a market development team uh, the need of a market development team is simple because if you need for a project like these a net zero solution, you need at least three suppliers to come up with a common a joint solution. You need an innovative housing association to bear the pain of the first pilots. You need to create a product that fits and you need a policy that makes it all fit on the long run. These are so many things that the path to go there is more like a rocky path. And the government can bring all these people one by one together. And these people can change laws. So you need somebody in between. And it's a little bit like if you want to come from this to this, what you need is a gardener. Somebody who sows the seed, inspires. Somebody who waters the plants, removes the stones, and help all these plants grow. And that's actually the role of an MDT, a market development team, the Eastbrook teams in the countries. Con bring these suppliers together, inspire them, explain what the idea is about, connecting to innovative housing associations, but then build a community around it, connect to the tenants there, we've heard about that as well today, and then organize change, that means organize subsidies, um, speak with the governments to create a law change to remove all these little stones uh, on the way. And that's what we've done. I can talk a little bit more specifically about Germany. So, first of all, I like two things about the UK. The first thing is your community approach. I've seen that when I, yeah, when I moved to a, a Scottish uh, dance society. We've been doing Scottish dance in Berlin even with the British ambassador, if you feel that community spirit. I like the second thing very much, that's British politeness. But today, I'm here as a German, I still work in Berlin, and that means I'll use a little bit of German directness. So how can Scotland, the UK, and me, maybe even Ireland get there? First of all, I think there's one thing, and that's finance and market development team. The German government has invested a little more than 10 million euros in that market development team so far. And where we've got is a market of already 250 million euros for A plus net zero prefabricated retrofits. I think this is one of the best investments the government has ever made into climate protection. The second thing is a subsidy scheme around these things. That means subsidies for innovation, product development, 
for sustainable products that are scalable. And the second is for the first, let's say, 10,000 apartments, units, houses, uh, subsidy scheme around these buildings to get over the hill. Like El said, it's too expensive in the beginning. You need some time to get costs down. And the third thing is install a pipeline for change. Connect the market with the ministries through a team, for example, collect all the bits and pieces that have to be changed. That's what the German government does. We have a strong relationship with them and they approach other ministries or other people within their ministry. That's really powerful to get changes done. Well, but there's more you and the people here in the room can do. If there are builders here that listen really to what the demand side needs, create products, but don't not on a white paper, together with housing associations, ask them, listen to what they need. The housing associations, you need to be brave to be to you to do first pilots. It's painful in the beginning, but if you look at the benefits of tomorrow, it's really worth it. And then the third thing, you all need to connect and start innovating together. That's my message for today. Um, very excitingly, the timber facade panels that you can see are built from homegrown timber and then reduced into CLT, um, uh, cross laminated timber, here at best. And then they're manufactured into the panels themselves in Interboard and by Ecosystems Technologies. And you hang the facade off the steel frame and then bringing the wood benefit, the biophilic benefits of wood directly into the classroom. And I want to talk a lot more about that project, but running out of time, so you can um, find out about this go on the Innovation Factory Tour this afternoon. And I hope in the future that more and more realise the benefits of manufactured and industrialised approaches. And there's two companies here, Indy Nature and Kinetics, who manufacture um, hemp and construction waste bricks. They were both born at best and they're now working with the retrofit supply chain. But there's so much more space to join in and follow their example. So what needs to happen is a very big change, but it starts with you. You guys need to connect to others who have the same mindset. Come on a study tour and be inspired by the possibilities. And the next one is right here in Glasgow in December. So if you're interested, come and speak to me afterwards to sign, to sign up. You need to start innovating, but don't do it on your own. You need to collaborate so that we've got that key, which was interoperability. And hopefully, the future involves significantly less demolition. We only want to demolish these outdated ideas. We're going to now finish with a quick survey. So if you're able to, I'd ask that you will please stand up. Thank you. What I'd like you to do is hold your hands as if you're about to catch a ball. Thank you. Now, the survey is to find out how big you are, how close you think you are to embracing industrialised approaches. So if you think you're quite close to industrialised um, retrofit that you've got. We're going to have your hands quite close to each other like you're praying. And if you think you're um, quite far away from this idea, then your hands are going to be quite far apart. And if you're already an innovator in this space, Jamie, um, and you're at the juicy end of industrialising, then you need to raise your hands up in the air like you've scored a goal or your team has scored a goal. I'm hoping for a few more innovators. That's it, get your hands up. So have a little look around. Hopefully you can see there are already Innovating, so you need to connect up with them. Um, and I just need to take some pictures as well to study later. And, um, also, I'll keep your hands because the hands are really important. And also, I told my kids that I would get um, a picture of me getting a standing ovation. And this is <laughs>
near you. And I hope to inspire, I hope that we've inspired you to think, how can I be part of it? So follow us to join the movement. Thank you very much. A whirlwind. <laughs> I have one question, but please do put your hands up if you've got a question yourself. Um, a key thing that's been emerging for me over the last two days is this link between thinking really globally and in a connected way and learning from one another, but then also the power of acting at a regional level and how we need to make things more localised and focused. Um, and you mentioned one of the contractors that you worked with or worked on an energy project strong project in Nottingham um, and I've heard a little bit about that I wonder if you could talk a bit about how um, they came on board and how they upskilled and how that sort of started to change the supply chain in that area. Yeah, Melius Homes um, were born out of Nottingham City Homes so Nottingham City Homes came across the idea of Energy Strong from their global visits and they said what can we do to replicate that so they started a factory right next to their offices in Nottingham and produced these panels and they're still producing panels and actually they're now, because a lot of the homes that they've already addressed across wall properties where the structural load, sorry to be technical, but the structural load goes down the walls at the gable end and you hang the panel off, so that's a specific archetype that they've responded to. There's a lot more of those homes down in London and now they're producing panels in London. But to answer your question about the sort of locality, I think that we need to have local based solutions. We can't be we can't be shipping panels too far away. And I know a project in um, France actually um, by Boyk and they're producing 300 retrofits, so it's reasonably big scale. But they've got timber panels that they're manufacturing close to site. So I think that's really important. We need to be helping to support the local um, the labour force and to upskill people locally so that they can continue that on their own and not you know without continuing support. Yeah, it feels like a really great opportunity for businesses to transition into the sector. So, anyone have a question from the audience? Um, yeah, you can have a look at Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. I'm Adam from Teesside University. I lead the Centre for Sustainable Development. Uh, I have a question. Uh, it's for sake of my uh, project, uh, Reconstruct, an uh, 8 million uh, European funded project. Uh, how much have you looked at the full life cycle uh, impact of your solutions? Because uh, at prototype level, I uh, fully appreciate the uh, benefits of a project like this. But uh, just a comparison, if the buildings are still in the state that they could work for another 30 years, uh, would that be low carbon if you just insulated the roofs from the bottom and just made some improvements to the walls or just uh, you had to replace that uh, room and the, wall, uh, the roof and the wall uh, with uh, these fancy solutions? Well, we, have, we haven't done some exact calculations, but I've seen some calculations of companies and just very general, it really pays off over the next 50 years. Um, very much in comparison to removing that building and building a new one, of course, but I think also very much compared to just leaving the old roof and just insulating um, because you have it all at the same time. The idea is really have a replicable solution that you can apply on a number of buildings in terms of a, a digital toolbox. So, yeah, maybe you have some more. Um, I was going to say, um, we've also got, uh, there's a project which the UK is sadly not part of because of Brexit, so let's not go there, but um, it's called Circular Reno and it's an um, EU project that most of the other energy spawn teams are part of and it's, it's looking at circularity so it's thinking about the, the whole life cycle as well of the actual building material so it's definitely something that needs to be considered when we're making these choices but when you're trying to prototype and scale up um, there's a lot of conflicting things that we're trying to address all at the same time but I 100% agree you need to think about the whole life cycle. Excellent. Well, thank you. Please do save the rest of your questions for the panel at the end. And yeah, please join me again in um, 